Hey there! Thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be reviewing a very, very special and rare LEGO Ninjago item. So for 2021's Christmas LEGO employee gift, it was actually a very special Ninjago-themed Temple of Celebrations, featuring every single one of the 2021 10th anniversary of Ninjago Golden Figures, a full-on Christmas-themed temple, sleigh, all sorts of really interesting stuff, and I have it in hand to review right now. So what makes the set so special is that you had to be a LEGO employee for a certain amount of time to actually be given the set. Whether you're actually a manager at a brand store, or working for LEGO Corporate in Blonde or in Enfield, Connecticut, there basically is a very limited amount of these sets available. And I'm really, really lucky to be able to have gotten my hands on one, which is why I wanted to bring it to all of you to showcase this review. I can't wait to unbox this, I've kept it sealed before this review to show you the unboxing process, so let's go ahead and do that right now and see what we've got. Alright, so here we are with set number 400-2021, hence the year 2021 being the Christmas gift for LEGO employees in the year of 2021. This is the Ninjago Temple of Celebrations, and it's a really exciting set. I'm very happy to get this because it's the first time that LEGO has done a Ninjago-themed employee Christmas gift. What's even cooler is that if you actually are interested in building this yourself, there are no exclusive pieces in this set. Unlike most other employee gifts, which did feature a good amount of exclusive pieces or minifigures that really have amped up the price, this build can thankfully be put together out of pretty much just any existing LEGO piece. There's nothing recolored, no new prints, no new recolors, nothing really that's stopping you from just going out and building this yourselves. Although for this one, I did actually want to own the actual set itself because I just kind of wanted the box and the whole experience of opening it up, which I kind of want to share with all of you as well. And so, first of all, there's actually one thing I do want to start off with, which is the greeting card. Every single one of the employee Christmas gift sets comes with a special greeting card for the holidays, which is very nice, addressed to LEGO employees from the current CEO of LEGO and the Christensen family, which is a very nice touch. They have it in Danish here as well as in English, which is very nice. And it actually talks about a little bit about how LEGO has grown over the particular year. Some of the major initiatives that they've undertook, such as prototyping bricks from recycled plastic, investing in solar energy, and donating to help children in difficult situations. So a lot of great things that the LEGO group is doing. They're sharing that in the letter here. And it's just a very nice exclusive card that does come with the set as well, featuring some nice photography of the final set. With that though, let's set this aside and actually get this fully opened up. So on the back here it says, what better way to celebrate the first 10 years of LEGO Ninjago than with a unique Temple of Celebration set that brings all the themes, well-known characters together in a fun, festive LEGO build for you and your family. Enjoy! And that is exactly what you're going to do. So first off, kind of want to show the different angles of the box here, you'll notice that this actually comes with every single one of the 10th anniversary golden minifigures. However, there is a bit of a change to the Master Wu figure to kind of make him fit in with the rest. The actual original 10th anniversary Master Wu figure we got had a gold beard and a gold head for the Ninjago City Garden set. This time he's just using his standard head and standard beard, although he does have a gold hat to kind of fit in, which I think does kind of make sense with the style of the rest of the ninja. It also comes with the Scales family is what it appears to be, although it is just using the Mesmo mold. It has the regular Mesmo piece, as well as a child version of Mesmo with a scarf, which is just a really cute addition. Technically, this minifigure and the Santa Garmadon figure, as well as the Misako figure, are exclusive to the set. However, they are just using existing prints. Obviously, this is just the Mesmo figure with dark blue short legs and a red scarf. Misako is just using a Lloyd fan torso for whatever reason, and Santa Garmadon is literally just a regular Santa build, but with a beard and Garmadon's face slapped on top of it. So again, nothing actually exclusive for this particular set, which is nice because again, it allows people to recreate it should they want the exact set on their own. Going on to the other side of the box, we actually have this set being part of LEGO's Build Together initiative, in that different members of a family can build different sections of the temple together, which is something they're kind of introducing in the new 2022 sets, which I think is a fun initiative to do. It definitely is more successful on some sets than others, and I'm curious to see how it works out for this one. Moving on to the other side, we have some more photos of the set itself. Just kind of a nice, charming little display here showcasing the different things you can do with the set. These are kind of the typical alternate images that you would normally find on a standard LEGO set. And onto the front here, there's really just nothing too much on the front. Just kind of a regular flap to be opened. So let's just open up this bad boy right now. 
I'm gonna be very careful to open this without damaging the box too, too much. The box was a little bit crushed when it first came in, but I think it's generally supposed to be okay. It wasn't nearly as bad as some other boxes that I've gotten in the mail. And certainly after receiving that package, it was not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. So after this is open, you can see steps one and two here. Presumably this is for the dragon and this is for the main temple. All right, so there's immediately some interesting things to see here when we first open up the box. First of all, we have a bit of a paper sheet here talking about from plastic to paper about how Lego in 2025 is swapping plastic for paper completely. They say by 2025, essentially they're going to have every single packaging be made out of paper instead of plastic. I don't know how long this will take to roll out. Personally, I've bought a lot of 2022 sets already and none of them had paper bags. So maybe this is just something they are just starting, just a plain back, but there you go. And what's interesting is that uh, indeed, as you can see, they actually have some paper paper bags here. So it's a really interesting way of packaging it. You obviously cannot see the bricks inside, but honestly, I think it's kind of nice. It almost feels kind of deluxe to have it actually written with the number here. We have bag eight and bag two in paper bags. And then for some reason, they've just used the regular plastic bags for the rest of it. Not really sure why they've only done it part way, especially given that they actually made an effort to put this in, talking about how they are swapping all their bags from plastic to paper, but only a few of the bags in the set actually are made out of paper. So again, as you can see here, a lot of just regular bags, the standard plastic stuff we've seen. Of course, bag one is paper, which I guess makes sense. You kind of want to showcase that for the first one. A regular bag 10 and a seemingly random assortment of paper bags versus plastic bags in here, which I guess sort of makes sense because they did say they haven't rolled it out completely, but it just feels weird to have half the set be made out of paper bags and half can be made out of plastic. Now, in here we have the instruction manual. It's pretty interesting. It looks like there's multiple different books here. Again, focusing on that build together initiative, they seem to have five different books, five or six books, each focusing on a different aspect of the set. So we got Santa Garmadon and his reindeer dragon, and I presume the rest of the books will be for the temple itself. So let's just open this up and take a look at the manual. Okay, so manual one here. We have number two here for the base of the temple. Number three for a midsection, number four for one of the top parts, five for the very top of the temple, and six for the Christmas tree and dinner table. I'm very excited to build this, so let's just get right into it, and once we build it, we can jump into the rest of the review. All right, and finally, here it is, the fully built Ninjago Temple of Celebrations, set number 400-2021. This again was exclusive for LEGO employees. Now this includes a ton of minifigs, and it's really, really cool to see the sheer variety in different figures we actually are able to get with this model. So obviously I think the most important thing is that this includes every single one of the Golden Ninja. So last year in 2021, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Ninjago, LEGO essentially introduced each one of the Golden Ninja to be available in each of the individual Ninjago Legacy sets. It was certainly a hassle getting them all because you had to buy a ton of different sets to get them, with the rare of them being the Master Wu minifigure in gold, which only was in the Ninjago City Garden set. Well, thankfully, this set has them all. And you might be wondering, well, hold on a second. The Master Wu figure in the Ninjago City Garden set had a gold face. That was a special print for a gold face, but this one is not gold. So what gives? Well, the answer is that yes, indeed, it was a special print for the Ninjago City Garden set. But what's even cooler is, is that they actually include that specially gold printed head and golden beard in the temple itself. So you can either choose to have them blend in better with the rest of the ninja and have the normal yellow face, 
or you can turn the temple around and see his head mounted on a podium here, essentially acting as a statue. As you can see here, this is the specialized Golden Wu headpiece. So really cool that they actually included it. I did not even catch this in many of the original photos. I assume that it just wasn't included and they were keeping it separate and exclusive to the Ninjago City Garden set. But no, in fact, they decided to actually include it in this set. So that's really cool. In addition to the six main ninja as well as Master Wu and Gold, we actually have Garmadon here as well. This is actually the first time Garmadon's appeared in a set in a while, specifically because he was in some of the legacy sets, but not really a main focus of the major storyline. This, however, is a pretty funny version of Garmadon, specifically known as Santa Garmadon. He's using just the standard torso and legs for the Santa minifigures, but he just has a white fluffy beard and the standard Garmadon head, as well as a gold crown to just get in that festive spirit. Again, there's nothing exclusive about this minifigure. It's not like some of the advent calendar minifigures, which actually try to integrate the character into the world of Christmas. This one is literally just taking Garmadon's head and putting it on a Santa body. While I do kinda wish they did something a little bit more exclusive just to make it that much more special, on the one hand, I do actually really appreciate that they didn't because again, that doesn't mean that diehard Ninjago collectors will have to purchase this exclusive set just to get one more minifig for their collection. So. There he is. It also comes with a new variant of Misako in a Lloyd hoodie. This is obviously not something that ever appeared in the show and again is built out of existing pieces. It really is just using the standard Lloyd hoodie piece which was introduced for the Lego Ninjago movie and some of the Legoland stuff. It has Lloyd's name on the back as well so that's a nice touch there. It's a pretty common torso but it's nice to see it included here and I guess this is the only casual version of Misako we've gotten. And lastly, we have two different Serpentine to join in on the fun. They're literally just the Legacy Mesmo mold, but instead you have the regular Mesmo as well as a child version. I guess if you really kind of want to squint and maybe you could pretend that this is Scales and Scales Jr. in their Legacy formats, it doesn't really work, but I can imagine that was sort of what they were going for, making one of these snakes have these short legs and clearly be a child. So I just find that kind of funny that they managed to include that in the set for the minifigures, but really that's about it. In terms of accessories, Zane is the only one that has Christmas exclusive accessories unless you count this extra one by one stud to act as a snowball for Lloyd. Everyone else just has basically the standard accessories that they had when they were introduced in the legacy sets with the katanas, Cole's hammer, as well as Master Wu's staff. Only Zane has this special skiing getup. Finally, in terms of minifigure adjacent accessories, the set also includes a dual molded glitter transparent clear as well as golden spinner here. This actually was in one of the recent legacy sets from 2021 meant for Legacy Kai there, but you can definitely use it for say Wu because I do think the gold color definitely suits him a lot better. So that is essentially what you can use that for. Otherwise, that's basically all the figures and with that we can move on to the main set. So setting aside the figures here, let's now take a look at exactly what's included here. First of all, I do want to start with something a little bit smaller. So moving all of this aside, right here we have the Santa Reindeer or the Santa Garmadon Reindeer Dragon as it's called. The reindeer dragon here is actually a pretty fun build. It's a really detailed build for such a small animal, and I really appreciate the amount of detail they managed to pack in, allowing the head to really be moved around back and forth, up and down as well with the neck, and even the wings can be flapped up and down like this, so you really have quite the impressive wingspan here. Again, they did not introduce any vinyl or specially printed elements for this, so they're really just using the standard wing construction we've seen since stuff like the 2013 Golden Dragon, which, to be honest, does feel a little bit dated, but I guess for a Christmas thing not wanting to introduce any exclusive elements, it works generally okay. The limbs here can be moved back and forth on Mixel joints. It's actually very similar to the Lego Elves creatures in the fact that one of the joints is actually just mounted on a Technic axle here, whereas the other one is mounted on a Mixel ball joint, but the way that it's built up means that you really can't splay it any outwards. You can splay it inwards and to the back and front, but just not out this way. So that is a little bit unfortunate. I would have preferred to have a little bit more of a dynamic posing, let's say being able to splay these outwards like this to really just have a much larger style of posing, but I understand why LEGO designers do not do this. They specifically build in the legs to work like this so you don't get them splayed out and falling over. So I do understand that, especially because this set is, again, as I mentioned, directly intended to be built by families and children. So you do have to make sure that it works well for the kids. 
Otherwise, it's just kind of a fun Ninjago-inspired mashup between a reindeer and a dragon. It's certainly a pretty unique concept, but I actually do really like the way it was pulled off. And given that this wasn't actually advertised too, too much on the box art, I can only imagine that maybe they had some leftover budget for the set, so they figured why not add a little bit more festive builds to the set. So I do like that. It also has these very new and relatively rare pieces right here. You can see these are essentially supposed to be one by three clip to plate converter pieces. They were introduced in the 18 plus creator Volkswagen Beetle in 2021 and have been appearing in more and more 2022 Lego sets, but really this was one of the only 2021 appearances. So cool to get a special new Lego piece there. Finally, the sleigh itself is very, very simple, but one thing I really do appreciate is that it kind of is reminiscent of the Destiny's Bounty, especially because of these rounded ornamental elements on the back. You can see they're using the conical hat piece to act kind of like the way the Destiny's Bounty is built up. With the fins in the back, this is almost just like a sleigh version of the bounty, which I think is just such a fun design. And there you have it. If you want an extra close-up look at the Santa Garmadon figure, this is what he looks like. And yeah, it's literally just Santa with Garmadon's head on. I probably would have really preferred if they maybe did something like at least a forearm Santa. That would have been pretty funny. But I guess they really just didn't want to recolor any elements for this set, which I do applaud that effort. But it does lead to the minifigure feeling a little bit just shoehorned in. Setting this aside though, let's now take a look at some of the other parts of the set. We have a nicely built up Christmas tree. This is actually really well designed for a Christmas tree sort of side build here. And you can see it has the shurikens or ninja stars as decoration elements, which is just a fun touch. And I also really appreciate the way these presents are built. These are actually using somewhat unorthodox building techniques and pieces, using the piece introduced for the Lego Minecraft buildable characters here, and combining it with some other studs on the side pieces to really get this bow full fully wrapped around the present. Personally, I haven't really seen this technique being used in any of the modern Winter Village sets, having the bow wrap all the way around the bottom. It's a really small touch, but it makes these a lot more believable, and I really appreciate the way they're built. I hope that they actually use this technique for future Christmas-themed LEGO sets, because it really works. Of course, the other presents are really just kind of throwaway builds. They're just basically standard presents. Some of them have a bit of a Ninjago flair, like the Ninja Star on top of this one here. But for the most part, these are really just your basic presents that you would see in any sort of Winter Village display. We have some logs being used for firewood here, and this is just kind of a build that is set aside for later. And there's a reason for it, because one last thing we have to talk about here this is a little bit of a sled for the snakes or ninja to ride down on. It's just a basic build of a sled, but anyways, going back to those other pieces, you may notice that as we get into the temple here, there is a large area for seating. Now this area actually is really cool because you can swap it out for different stuff. Let's say you want to have all the characters having a feast around the table, so you can actually set up the chairs all like this and have a beautiful feast. However, when you want to switch out the decorations, you can simply remove this and place the tree right there inside fits just right in like so and there you have it you take out the chairs you put the presents underneath so you can just take the presents put it down like that and there you go the christmas tree is inside the temple itself so this is a pretty fun feature definitely adds a little bit of extra play and just a different kinds of scenery that you can add to the inside of the temple just to spice things up a little bit and of course the logs are specifically meant to be placed on the side as well because you can just use them in general for this whole display especially when the tree is in place but anyways, let's actually move our focus to the main temple itself. This is actually kind of reminiscent of the Temple of Erjitsu model. That was one of Ninjago's major temples released in 2015. It kind of has a similar design. It is a lot smaller, but it is very reminiscent of that original Ninjago direct-to-consumer set, featuring a large facade area for the temple here that can be turned around with a fully interactive interior right here. They're even using the same exact wedge plates used on the Temple of Jitsu itself for the different floors here, so it's actually a nice build that is kind of a callback to that classic Ninjago set. Moving to the front of the temple though, you'll notice that there's actually a lot of really nice detail packed into this model. I appreciate little nods and details to other stuff from Ninjago like the snowman wearing a conical hat and a scarf. There's also a bit of a circular area to park, either park the sleigh on or actually put the Spinjitsu Tornado on so you can really have that kind of standing up right there. So that's a nice addition. I like that they managed to include that in the set here. And all in all, I actually am a big fan of the different snowy details that are added onto this temple while still making it feel like truly a Ninjago-inspired build. 
Now, the front of the temple actually can be separated into different levels. That is one minor complaint I have about the set. The levels just come off a little bit too easily. You'll notice that just tapping it slightly almost causes this to fall over. It's because each of these is only adhered by two studs. There's one stud here and one stud here. So it's super, super easy to say accidentally knock one of these platforms off like so. That one's only attached by four studs, which sounds like a lot, but really isn't. And you have to be really careful when picking this up. You can't accidentally pick it up from the side or else the platform will just come right off like that. So just some stuff you have to be careful about. This does definitely feel like it hasn't necessarily gone through every single one of the review processes that LEGO does for official sets. For instance, this is a really flimsy connection to attach the front of the awning here. It's using two LEGO skeleton legs on a bar as well as just a single clip to mount this. This just comes off really easily. So there are just a lot of things here that definitely feel like it was made for a much more limited audience. And as such, they didn't really need to go through the very rigorous safety checkings that they do for modern LEGO sets. Otherwise, though, it is a really nice build. It visually looks really fun from the outside. We've certainly gotten better temples in my opinion, but for a Christmas gift that captures the Ninjago flair, this does the trick. I especially like the usage of the very new elements introduced in 2021 for the Creator 18 Plus Space Shuttle. These right here have only appeared in that set and this one so far. At least of the time of the recording of this video, they've only been appearing in those two sets, so I think it's a nice way to depict snow and certainly works out very well for this model. Moving onwards to the inside though, that's where all the details come into play. Of course, on the lower level here, you'll see one of the printed tiles for the 10 years of Ninjago on the side of the wall there. It makes total sense they would include it. I also like the interior detailing, having the conical hats being used in the shape of the windows here. Just some really nice, simple, but nice shaping here. And what's even cooler is that you even have a bit of a display on the top here. I'm presuming that that red temple is specifically meant to be a nod to maybe one of the other Ninjago sets. Could be the Temple of Erjitsu, but obviously it's built out of only two pieces, so you can't really tell. Maybe that's just supposed to be a mini version of this temple actually. Moving on upwards to this level here, you have a bit of an open space because that is the full main entrance to the temple itself. You have a lot of different interesting details like a snow globe right here using the Mysterio fishbowl piece. I like the inclusion of the letters here which do play a significant role in Ninjago. And this right here is unmistakably the micro scale version of Ninjago City Gardens. You can see the large tree right there, the water base. This essentially is supposed to be the build for Ninjago City Gardens in universe. So next to a minifigure, you can almost imagine that this is the Lego set that the minifigure has put together. Moving on to this level up here, they do get a little bit smaller and less complex as it goes on. I guess this, I mean, maybe is supposed to be the Ultrasonic Raider. It's a white vehicle on wheels. I don't really know, but not really sure what else that's supposed to represent, as well as just a simple gold present. And finally up here, we have the uppermost level featuring yet another present as well as that Master Wu bust right there, which again is just the golden face to be used on the golden figure. So again, as you can see here, the golden figure for Wu included in the set is technically different because he has his standard face on. So you can just swap it off if you actually want the regular legacy version without having to get Ninjago City Gardens. Otherwise though, it's actually a pretty simple build inside the temple. There's not a ton going on inside here, but I actually really appreciate the amount of detail they managed to pack in, even to such a small space, given that these are no studded surfaces. There are no studs on these platforms here, so they really are just maximizing the space available, which makes for a nicely packed in, but not too crowded interior display. With that though, I think we've basically summed up our look at this Ninjago Temple of Celebrations. It certainly is already one of the rarest LEGO Ninjago sets they've ever done, being an employee gift that was only exclusive to specific LEGO employees who were working for LEGO in 2021. It is a very, very special gift, and I'm really happy to have been able to own this and actually share this with all of you. Let me know down in the comments below if you own this set. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. It certainly is not one of the best Ninjago temples, but for a Christmas gift, I do like what it is trying to be, and it definitely gets the point across of being just a fun temple to play around with for Christmas time. Again, I also really appreciate the inclusion of all of the different legacy golden figures. It really does make the set feel just that much more deluxe. When we first saw box art, a lot of people weren't sure if they would be including every single one of them, but yeah, here they are, all of the golden figures, including Wu, in his golden outfit, as well as the golden hair, as well as just another set of different figures with some special surprises here and there. 
With that though, we have summed up this review of the very festive Ninjago Temple of Celebrations. All right, and with that, we have summed up this review of the fantastic Ninjago Temple of Celebrations model. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think of the set. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? And do any of you own it as well? Thank you all so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. I hope you enjoyed this review and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks so much and bye-bye for now.